Thank you for listening to Perk Up with the President. I am Dr. Howard Spearman, President of Rock Valley College, and today we get to talk about persistence, enrollment, retention, and completion. And when you add those four up, we get student success. My first series was with faculty members and understanding student success from the lens of faculty members. The second series is with trustees and understanding student success from the lens of our Board of Trustees. And today we have our Vice Chairman here, Bob Trojan. And so I am going to first have him introduce himself. Uh, Trustee Trojan, if you could introduce yourself and so, sort of answer why you decided to become a trustee. And then what is it that you do in the community as far as uh, your professional role in the community? Well, hi, I'm Bob Trojan, a trustee uh, elected in 2015. And at that time, I said the reason I want to run is to use my manufacturing and business uh, experience, along with my community involvement, to make Rock Valley College a better resource for the community. I said it six years ago, and I still believe that that's a good reason for anybody to run, is to make Rock Valley College a better resource for the community. What I do professionally, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, uh, a few of us started up a manufacturing company and I'm president and CEO of that manufacturing company. It's called Rockford Linear Actuation. It makes hydraulic products for a variety of industry applications. And so that's what I do uh, on the side when I'm not doing work for the Rock Valley College. Well, I appreciate you sharing that uh, with me. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you start off in uh, your bachelor's degree? Is it engineering? I have a bachelor's degree in engineering, mechanical engineering, yes. How did you ever decide to go down mechanical engineering pathway? Well, when I was um, going to college, I got a part-time job at an engineering department. And uh, I guess I always had a feel for drawing. At that time, we were drawing instead <laughs> of using a computer, you know. But uh, I just eventually got interested in the mechanical side of engineering, and that's where I decided to get my degree in. And when I graduated, I worked for a company that made uh, big tractors. Mm -hmm. um, and so I worked my way from engineering there into management. And uh, from there, uh, other job opportunities came along the way. And 30-some uh, years ago, we, uh, my wife and I landed here in Rockford area. We're originally from Chicago. Okay. And uh, we lived in England for, for a few years working. and lived in Rhode Island for six years before we came here, but we've been here now a little over 30 years and uh, been enjoying my ride all, of, all the way. <laughs> so talk to us about, I guess I'm gonna ask you two questions. One, talk to us uh, or speak to us about your definition of student success, but then how has your uh, experience, your educational pathway impacted your definition of student success? Well, I think student success is probably more than just the, the, the letter grade that they earn. I think a uh, successful student is, is going to get something from each of the courses that he or she takes. And uh, hopefully the successful student will wind up with an associate degree or a, a certificate where the person can get employed. I mean, that's the whole goal, I think of any kind of education is to make yourself uh, an employable person. Uh, I know in my case, uh, my engineering degree certainly opened up doors for job opportunities at a very young age. And, uh, and, and I think that uh, that certainly has helped me uh, throughout my career. But I think once you get past five, six, seven, eight years, uh, where you went to school isn't so important as what you've done since you graduated with your certificate or with your degree. I appreciate that. So <clears throat> while you were speaking to that, I automatically start wondering about what type of college student you were in undergraduate. What, what, what's the story that you, you're comfortable telling, even maybe telling your grandchildren about? 
Well, I guess uh, I would say I, my first year, actually, was at a junior college, Wilson Junior College in Chicago. I did not know that. I spent the first year there. Um, I was in a, in a service first. I got to back up. I went in the Marines first, right out of high school, with a couple of us uh, guys that hang, hung around. And after the Marine Corps duty, uh, went to Wilson Junior for a year. And then I, then I took a year at the uh, University of Illinois at Navy Pier. Which of <laughs> course, that's, that, that goes back a ways. But yes, I did, I did a year at, at Navy Pier. And then the final two years, uh, my wife and I were married. And I finished my two years uh, in Champaign-Urbana. And my approach was, you know, if I didn't understand something, some some formula or some uh, part of the course, I'd dig around and try to find some other resources or whatever in order to uh, to learn about the subject that the teacher was uh, teaching us. And uh, resulting from all that, I was on a honor uh, society in mechanical engineering at Illinois. So my grades were, were pretty good as an engineer, as an engineering student anyway. <laughs> and. Uh, so that, you know, I, I worked at it. I worked hard at it. Uh, it didn't come that easy, but I worked at it, and that's the kind of student I was. And uh, as I say, as a result, I wound up with a nice job right out of college. Are there certain characteristics you feel that, well, let me ask it this way. Between your, your experience and the success that you experienced, and now you as the CEO, what are some of the characteristics you would like to see students coming out of college possess? Well, certainly any employee, whether it's a factory worker or a college uh, graduate or a college student for that matter, we want, we want the, the person to be attentive. We want them to be a, you know, come to work on time. <laughs> Be there. Uh, if you are sick, call in. Uh, but on the job, we want you to be interested in what you're doing. We don't want you to be a goof off. Uh, we want you to learn the job. And in, in, in any cases, you can learn other parts of other jobs at the same time. We want you to be interested in what you're doing. We want you to be there. Uh, because I think those are big factors of success, more than how smart you are or how hard you work. It's, you know, all the other elements that make you for a valuable employee. And that's what we look for. And we try to get those characteristics in the people that we do uh, employ. <clears throat> Is there a certain project that always comes to mind when it's, maybe you consider it, it's the a defining moment in your success or something that you're truly proud of that you've created? Uh, well, even though I was a graduate engineer, my life in pure engineering work was somewhat short because I progressed into management. And um, obviously, as, as I rose through the ranks in the first big company I worked for, uh, I was always making good progress uh, managerially and taking on uh, departments and taking on whole facilities and making them more successful. I think were the big contributing success stories in my life. Uh, so I think that. And the second thing is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, 20 years ago, uh, the company that I had been working for was moved out of uh, Rockford. Mm -hmm. And uh, a group of us decided that we would want to start our own very similar competing business. And that's what we did. We went to the auction that the company uh, called Hydroline uh, put all the equipment up for sale, and we bought everything we needed, and we started up our company, and that was, it's gonna be 20 years this coming February, and we're still alive. We've managed uh, the ups and the downs, including this past year, and uh, it's been kind of a, a good ride, but we did it uh, after, uh, and we, we didn't know if we could, but we did. <laughs> so what was going, I, I'm assuming <coughs> that was a major risk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what was going through your mind? Why were you so willing to take this risk? Well, f first of all, the people uh, that, uh, the couple people that uh, came with me, we knew the business. We knew the customers. We knew the 
the product. Uh, so we felt comfortable from that standpoint because, you know, those are the key elements if you're going to start a business know your product, know your customers, and so on. Well, we, we did that. The big risk was, in order for us to get a loan to get started, I had to put my house up for <laughs> collateral. <laughs> and so uh, putting up your house for collateral for five years is a bit of a risk. But uh, we made every single loan payment. And uh, after that five years, the, house, the, the loan was paid, and the house was relieved. <laughs> so, but that's a, that was a risk. I mean, a lot of people don't want to put that kind of risk, but we did. And I, I, I should say, I did. So, uh, but we're free and clear now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's important. Uh, sometimes students don't understand that uh, you have to step out uh, sometime and be willing to take that risk. Oh, sure. Uh, and sometime uh, success can be a risk. You're, sometimes you have to be willing to sacrifice some things oh, in yeah. order to move forward. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you got to you got to do some sacrificing. It's not going to come to you in a, you know, nice uh, nice uh, colorful bag. You, you sometimes you got to work at it. <laughs> you mean you can't just get everything through drive through and no, microwave? You can't, no, you can't just you can't <laughs> just dial up the computer either all the time. I mean, you know, my, my life started off where we were still using slide rules for uh, calculating. <laughs> and, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with those things or not. And uh, my first programming job way back when was an IBM punch cards. <laughs> I had to actually punch the cards and feed them into the, into the computer at that time. So that, that goes back a ways. So when I'm looking at our smartphones today, in my lifetime, a lot of technology change has taken place. Yeah, I know that in my household, at least with my oldest uh, son, when he was much younger, uh, I had to compete with Google on who was the, the smartest in the household. He was, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what Google says. That's not what Google says. <laughs> but Google's not always right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got to cross-check it. <laughs> right, exactly. So. Uh, as we talk about, you know, part of this is about talking about uh, PERK, persistence. Uh, when we speak to persistence, we're really talking about student success over a semester. Uh, and then when we talk about uh, enrollment, you understand enrollment and yeah. from prospective students getting them in. Uh, but then there's retention. So from fall to fall, so one year uh, sort of success. And then you have completion. Uh, you know how we look at it, we look at it by completing a certificate, by completing their degree, but we also understand that it's important if a student only wanted three credits uh, and they completed those three credits, for that student that is considered completion for the student. Well, sure. Yeah. It's a goal for the student. So if you had to rank them, which one do you think is uh, more important from a student's perspective? Persistence, enrollment, retention, or completion? <laughs> All of them. Uh, well, I think you got to be persistent. Certainly, uh, it, it's a good characteristic to be persistent throughout your life in all the endeavors. Uh, and so that would be a good characteristic of a student to have high persistency, because that would demonstrate in other parts of his life, his his or her life, uh, they'll be persistent there as well. Uh, so I think that's probably a pretty important uh, character. If you have good persistency, you're gonna, the rest of it's gonna come. Your enrollment's gonna come, your, your soul line's gonna come along, your completion's gonna come along. But if you're not persistent, then I think that's probably a weak link. Thank you. A lot of people may not know this, but you're typically engaged uh, with uh, students in keeping them aware, robotics. And so what has been your experience? What, do you, what is it that, what's your passion around robotics? Sort of share that story. Uh, what do you do, how do you volunteer, how do you support students around robotics? Well, this uh, Rock River Robotics Off-Season Competition, otherwise known as R2OC, is a local five-team organization that started I think this would be our ninth year. 
and I started with them year one. They asked me if I could help them get the word out. And so I said, okay, because I was uh, active there in the community. And before you know it, they, they needed some money. So I said, well, I, I think I know a few people. Let me raise the money and see if I can raise the money. And so, of course, that's what I've been doing ever since is raising money through community organizations uh, to help fund uh, the program, which is uh, every summer, except last summer, of course. And uh, so that's one aspect of it uh, that I find uh, good. But also, when I see the kids, when they're getting their robots ready, or when they're competing, or when they're fixing them in the background, I mean, these kids are so excitable. You know, it's really something to see how really passionate they are. And when the competition is actually going on and you got the kids behind the keyboards doing the computer stuff and you got the kids on the, uh, in the stands doing the cheering and you got the other kids, if something happens to the robot, they immediately go in there and get it fixed up, you know. It's really, it's really neat to see the excitement that these kids have. And I, I applaud them for that and I applaud the leaders, uh, the uh, the the, uh, the counselors that work with the kids to bring them along during the course of the year to uh, bring the passion and to recruit every year they're recruiting new kids because you know typically they're maybe sophomores juniors uh, seniors and they go on to college or they go on to work or whatever so the counselors are constantly recruiting kids too and this group that is now in its ninth year pretty much all the same counselors today as they were 10 years ago, even though, they're, even though their kids have gone on to college or other, other things, the counselors are still working with, uh, with this whole group. So I think that's kind of cool because uh, it shows persistence. You know, they're, they're doing their thing, they're, they know what, how they can contribute, and, and they, they persist, they, they keep going at it. So this would be my ninth year or two. And, we're, we are looking forward to uh, planning uh, July 24th, 25th at the City Market downtown, oh. an outdoor event, because normally we have it here at Rock Valley College mm -hmm. at the PEC, but because of the rules, uh, we've decided that we would not risk planning it for here and then find out we can't do it. So we're, we're planning to go to Rockford City Market and have it outdoors under the roof. And uh, it won't be as many teams maybe half as many, which is still about 12 to 16. We're, at, we're going to be surveying those teams uh, in the next uh, two weeks to see who's going to want to come. But anyway, we're going to do that, and I think that'll draw another new bunch of people to uh, witness it because it'll be downtown. <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely. What I appreciate about the story is that that was a story about student success, yeah. right? You're, you, <clears throat> you can, we can see your passion for the students being engaged, being innovative, see, seeing uh, an idea come to, uh, to light. But you mentioned you were there supporting as a fundraiser, uh, but you're also just planning, helping to plan. Oh yeah. But yeah. then you have the counselors in the background helping to recruit. Uh, parents have to be involved sure, as absolutely. well, right? Oh yeah, sure. And so it, it really, you know, whether it uh, takes a village, it takes a community uh, to really impact. And there's so many different levels or levels of engagement when it comes to student success. And sometimes just getting them to build up their confidence to take one step forward. Oh sure. <laughs> can impact them for a lifetime. It's oh yeah, absolutely. Getting them involved, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, as we've had it uh, held here at the PEC at Rock Valley College, uh, typically we'd draw in a thousand, fifteen hundred <coughs> people, not only students, but adults and people just interested coming to the center and watching uh, during the course of the whole day. So, you know, it, it, you got a lot of community involvement. <laughs> Exactly, and I remember. I remember it used to how big it used to be in the PEC, oh, sure. and then yeah. some, we would have some of our recruitment team there yeah. as well. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. So, uh, so 
Outside of that, is there one more story that you have regarding student success or how you like to engage students in the community or on the Rock Valley College campus? Well, certainly the athletics uh, is, uh, is another good venue for uh, successful uh, students because it's one thing to go to, to classes, but then if you're also on a sports team, you, you have to supplement your classroom work with your sports activity. And as you well know, Rock Valley's had a high success rate with national championships, and that takes a little bit more energy and compassion and persistence to be a student and to be an athlete. And I think uh, that combination works pretty well. And it's obviously the kids are successful at, at both. If they're successful in the classroom, they're gonna graduate. And if they're successful at the sport, they're gonna win a national championship. And you, you got a bunch of flags hanging up already that show that, proves it. So to me, that's, that's student success. Absolutely. I did you did you play uh, in in college? I played in high school. High school, yeah, not in college. I played uh, I played on the uh, baseball team in high school. Yeah, okay. baseball team. Yeah, <laughs> I played I played football in college. Played several. I played primarily uh, basketball and uh, football in high school, and there were a lot of lessons learned on the field, on the court, being a part of the team that still impacts my life today. No, you, didn't, sure. you didn't know it then. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't yeah. know it would be. Yeah. You know, but now you think about it and you start thinking about some of the leadership development or leadership skills you have and how, where they developed or where you had a chance to explore what type of leader you're going to be or yeah. how to engage during tough times and critical times. Athletics has helped. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a case of teamwork too. You know, working as a team. Uh, and even in, in today's world of work, uh, working as part of a team is still a very important characteristic for, uh, for, for people, for students, for employees. Uh, and you learn that through athletics. I mean, certainly most all athletics, maybe golf is uh, individual sport, but all the rest of them, you gotta be a team player. And I think that's, that's an important characteristic. So there you have it, and thank you for listening again to Perk Up with the President. We had this opportunity to really think through student success from the lens of our very own Vice Chairman, Trustee Bob Trojan. Uh, he is a successful businessman. He's a CEO. He's a veteran. Uh, he's also graduated, had his bachelor's degree in, I believe, mechanical engineering. Yes. Uh, but he also, he, he also attended a community college as well. He's participated in uh, community events or initiatives that impact student success. And one of the messages that he clearly have stated today is about persistence. Students' ability to persist through the tough times, students' ability to persist uh, uh, over or get over their fears regarding getting onto college campus, uh, being innovative in their robotics. Uh, there's so many different ways that as community leaders, as uh, higher education leaders, that we can impact student success. And once again, making sure that we're there to encourage students will never hurt a student in moving forward. So once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Perk Up with the President and enjoy the day.